Friends, for those of you not familiar with the kiln, I'll give you guys a brief little tour of this chamber. We have four fans right up there. That's the fan wall. And that's where the most of your air comes through. It comes down from there into the lumber right there. You want to get that hot air to go through your stacks. And that's what dries your wood. And above it right here, if I can get the lever to move and hold the camera at the same time, got our baffles right here. Now, ideally your stack would come up to the bottom of that baffle. You can go up pretty high, as you can see right there. But sometimes you don't have a full stack in here and that's okay, that's why I got that stair phone. I'll come in here in that little gap and I'll put stair phone in here and I'll show you guys here in just a minute how we baffle this load. You don't want your air coming through the fans and then escaping through a gap right there. You want it to come down here through the stack and go through the lumber. That's the only way it's going to dry. And also on these sides, I'll do the same thing. I got some baffles. I'll come down here with stair foam. I'll lean it on that top baffle and I'll try my best to cover up this whole area right here with stair foam. If you're on the other side, we'll do the same thing. You want to cover that gap up right there, guys. You want to force that air through your stack as much as you can. Now with this L200 Pro, there's a big improvement on it. And that is this right here. This little instrument is an electronic wet bulb. And for you guys running Nile kilns, you know what I'm talking about when I say a wet bulb. You usually have your little water vessel right here, full of water collecting a moisture content reading for your wet bulb. And on this kiln, your dry bulb and wet bulb, both are read through this one little instrument right here. It's a really nice feature. It keeps you from coming in here and having to fill up that water as it evaporates. Now in here in the back of the kiln, and look over the echo guys, this thing is pretty airtight. Right there are some more probes, and if you want to check the temperature of your wood during sterilization, you can drill a hole in one of your sample boards and take this probe and stick it right in, and that will tell you the temperature of your wood while it's in the kiln. I'm not done that yet, but we'll be testing that very soon. Up here on the back corner wall, we have an exhaust fan. So when the kiln gets overheated, meaning if I set it for 120 and it gets up to about 125 degrees, that fan will cut on and dump out some of the heat so you can keep your temperature settings where you want them to be. Right here in the back, friends, is the main part of this kiln. This is the L200 unit right here. You got a fan on the top. It's got heat strips inside of it to heat up the kiln. And it's also got its intake right there on the bottom. That's where the moist air goes in. It goes through the condenser and gets turned into water. Then it goes through that little hose right there and dumps out of the back of the kiln. So all the water coming out of your wood would go through that condenser. It gets sucked right in and then it gets condensed into water. And that's how that works, guys. This kiln unit is not drying your wood. Let me make you guys understand that. Those fans are not drying your wood. To make it simple to understand, all you're doing inside of a kiln is creating an environment for the lumber to properly dry. You're controlling the temperature, you're controlling the humidity and the airflow. And by doing that, it's making an ideal situation for this lumber to dry. Without that, you're kind of just running heat in here in fans. You don't really know what you're doing and the lumber's not going to dry properly. There's a lot that goes into drying timber, guys. There's so much information you gotta collect and you're always learning. There's new processes coming out all the time. But for you guys that are out there running these kilns, always try to remember that you're controlling the environment inside of the kiln or the atmosphere, however you wanna call it. It's really the same thing. You're creating ideal drying conditions and controlling those conditions 
based on what kind of wood you're drying. But if you follow a good drying schedule, and Nile has an excellent schedule in their manual, you really can't go wrong. You need that, and you need a good moisture content reader, such as a Delm Hersey. You know your starting moisture content and the ending moisture content. That's also very important. But it's not that hard. You just have to really take all that data in. And when you get to your controller, make sure you have the right settings. All right, guys, I need to put the baffles in here now. Let me see if this still works. Good deal. Got her baffled up right there. That's all you need right there, guys. I've got some two inch rigid foam on there and some half inch. That's that uh, poly something. I never can pronounce that stuff. That's that extruded poly stream. If you're interested in it, right there is the name. That's the baffles that we use, just off cuts. And I'll probably run up to the other kiln sometime today and get a few smaller pieces to fill in that gap right there right there but that side right there looks okay you might put another piece right there behind that one but that's how you baffle a kiln guys you want to make sure all the airflow comes from that fan down into your stack let's go check out the controller and i'll show you guys what this thing sounds like when you turn it on all right guys one of the best things about this kiln is this touch screen controller right here guys this thing is nice it's got a lot of good features i want to point out real fast First one is this advanced mode right here. You hit that button and you got all your components right there. Your fans, compressor, the blower, the vent, everything listed. And it tells you the status of it. So if there's something wrong, you're gonna know it. And you can also do a test on every one of them for a few seconds. So I'll hit the fans. And they'll run for about 10 seconds right there. That's how you test everything. Well, we're back on the home screen here, and there's a lot of good information right here. You got your dry bulb and wet bulb temperature. That's very important. Shows everything right here, lets you know that it's running. You got your start and your stop button. And right here under mode selection, that's very important right there. It's got all the different modes. Right there, I have it in DH mode, and that's what I run the most on. And what that means is you're manually typing in your dry and your wet bulb. You're setting the temperature based on your thickness and whatever species is in there and the drying rate you want to put it at. You have a mode selection right there as well. If you want to type in the moisture content, do it that way. You have a hybrid mode for pine. You also have a heat treat right there at the bottom for setting the pitch. And then on the very bottom right there is a new feature they put on the kiln and that's the dump cycle. And we'll talk about that here in about a week when we start doing that on this walnut. So I apologize guys for all the glare on the screen. This is not the best conditions for video in here. But as you go into the DH mode, I got my settings already going. I got 110 on the dry bulb and 98 on the wet bulb. When 98 degrees is reached on the wet bulb, the compressor will come on and start pulling out that moisture. Go back to the main menu and we're ready to start the kiln guys. That's all there is to it, it's pretty simple.